Hello class, welcome to chapter 9, which is part of the 6B. And this chapter is talking about admission, transfer, discharges, and physical exams. Well, as usual, we're going to start from section 2. So, factors, this, is talk, this chapter is talking about the whole process of go, moving into a nursing home in the, floor, in the first place. Um, when that so people go to a nursing home two ways. Uh, they get old, uh, cannot function by themselves at home, family cannot take care of them anymore, maybe because of work or other obligations. So it's time to pick a nursing home for grandma. They're going to go out and visit several nursing homes. Depending on grandma's condition, they might prefer one nursing home to another. Or it could be a nursing home that is close to work or close to home, um, the family's home. So they will go out and uh, many times at my job I see people who are trying to come and check out our nursing home to see if uh, they can bring their loved one there. They'll walk around the building, um, you know, we always have to smile at them, you know, to uh, let them know that their loved one will be well taken care of and it's a friendly place. Sometimes they want to see if they have enough staff, um, you know, if the, the quality of care is okay, uh, is, is, is excellent, what's the five star rating of the nursing home. Some nursing homes are five stars, some nursing homes are one star. So those things factor into trying to choose the nursing home um, for, for, the, for a loved one. So let's dig, uh, go more into this chapter. So some questions that some families might consider, like I said, do, uh, do the staff seem courteous and friendly? Uh, do most of the staff, uh, the, if their loved one speaks another language, do they have staff there that speak the same language that their loved one speaks? Um, do they have enough staffing? Um, does the nursing home smell good or does it smell terrible? Um, what, what is the food like in the place? Are uh, residents up and dressed in the morning? Do staff interact positively? Do staff speak courteously? Um, what's the um, grooming like there and so on? You know, um, how are residents complaints resolved? Is there facility, is the facility licensed? Um, what was the survey or the inspection results? Uh, does the facility explain residents' rights? Um, are physical, occupational, and speech therapies available, especially if uh, their loved one need that? How often do falls, infection, or pressure ulcers occur? So they can ask all these questions. I already talked about some of them. Um, if you were choosing a facility for your loved one, I'm sure you would also ask some of these questions. Again, moving into a nursing home is a big adjustment. We've talked about that. And then uh, when they come in, we have to make them feel welcome. Um, there's a quiz in your book. You can go through that um, and talk about um, nursing assistance role in the emotional adjustment of a new resident. So what they, when, they, when they come in, we welcome them, we show them to their room, we show them how the call light operates, um, we introduce them to their roommate, if there's a roommate, we show them where the bathroom is, we show them where the, basically we give them, give them an orientation of the um, environment of their units of their room. Um, you're helping the reason, I would just be positive, be tactful, communicate clearly, um, you know, show them respect and be responsible, be honest, listen to their, uh, listen to them. They may have uh, requests for some things. Sometimes they come in and they're hungry because it's been, a, it's been hours since they left the, the hospital. Admission pack. So admission pack uh, is personal care item um, supplied to residents in the room. So for example, uh, they're going to get a basin, they're going to get comb, they're going to get bra toothbrush, they're going to get a uh, lotion, um, uh, uh, you know, like the 
look in Susie's room, you're gonna see all the stuff that we have um, that they're gonna they're gonna be using. They're just their personal toiletries that they're gonna need in the room, towel, washcloth, things like that. Baseline is the initial vital signs you take and wait that you check when a resident comes in. But baseline generally means that the initial measurements that you take, which you're going to use to establish that person's record. For example, resident comes in, on admission, you check their weight. That first weight you're, you're taking, you're checking, is your baseline weight. What, what it means is that when you check the resident's weight the next time, um, generally everybody's supposed to be weighed at least once a month. In my facility, when they are new, you have to weigh them the first day when they arrive, the second day of their arrival. After that, um, once a week for four weeks, and after that, once a month. Okay, so then. All the subsequent weight that we check, we, we, we check, we're now going to compare it with the baseline weight, which is the first weight that we took when the resident arrived. And that helps us to see whether things are getting better, the same, or getting worse. For example, resident came in, they weighed 150 on admission. A month later, they're now weighing 130 or 140. So then now we know they have lost 20 pounds or 10 pounds, depending on you know, the result. So that's what a baseline means. Again, it's the first time we're gonna meet the residents, so we have to make them feel welcome. We talked about that already. You know, wash your hands. Before they arrive, you want to make sure that the room is ready. You know, it's, it's so unprofessional. And that very first uh, first impression, resident arrived from the hospital. We knew this resident was coming. We already got the paperwork from the admission office that tells us everything about this resident. Why they went to the hospital, who they are, you know, the, the hospital weight and vital signs and all of that. If they're going to need a bedside commode, if they're going to need oxygen in the room, are they going to be on G-tube, what type of, how big are they, what's their weight. So, for example, if they were supposed to need a bedside commode, then they arrive and there is no bedside commode. That really, really makes the facility, makes the resident angry and the resident family. So now she needs to go to the bathroom. Well, the commode might be in a box in the supply room, way in the basement. You have to go get the supervisor to go get a key to go look for them. But we saw that in the admission information that came in before the resident arrived, we should have made sure the, the room was ready. So, you go through that, they arrive, uh, you introduce them to, to other, to roommate, like I said earlier. Any daily routine that, um, uh, where the menu is for the week, you, you show them um, that, and you show them the substitute. Um, so, basically, just welcome them to the units, welcome them to their room. So this is talking about the admission process. The, red, the charge nurse um, will do a head to assessment, uh, will assign uh, maybe vital signs and weights to, to the CNA. Um, one thing that the nurse assistant must do is to take an inventory of their personal belongings. Everything that they came with you must record it on the inventory sheet. How many pair of shoes, how many pair of pants, how many shirts. If they come with a phone or any electronic equipment, make sure you write the model of it. For example, we had a situation one time. Resident came in with iPhone, I guess it was iPhone 3, iPhone 4, something like that. A week later, Razer reported that uh, in fact, it was like the next day or in, within two days, three days. President reported that he came in with iPhone 8 or iPhone 9, I don't know which one, but it was not the one that he came with. So, because we did not write the, the type of iPhone the resident came with, 
We just had to go with whatever he said. Now, if they lose their uh, belonging in the facility, the facility have to reimburse them all. So be careful when you're writing down what they came with. So pound is, uh, is um, you know, um, one of the ways that uh, weight is taken. You don't do weight uh, by pounds or by kilogram, but most places use pound. Metric is just a system of weights and measurements. Bed reading is somebody who's confined to bed cannot move out. Um, you know, on their own. Kilogram, uh, it's a you know unit of uh, gram. Why should any change in the residence weights be reported right away? Well, they may be losing weight because of the food or they need help to eat. So we have to make sure that we, um, the resident is not losing weight. Okay. That's a scale similar to the one that we have here. Um, so I'm going to skip through all these steps because <coughs> we always follow the steps in the book. Um, height, measuring height. Oh, by the way, um, write this down. Um, ask for my instructors to demonstrate how to check height. There's a, the, the scale can also check height. Now, sometimes if a resident cannot stand on the scale to check height, they can just lay in bed and we use a tape. Like the, the tape measurement that tailors, you, tailors use, and we use it to just measure from their toe all the way to their head. The charge nurse will measure the circumference of the uh, stomach and the chest and record that. So we just talked about admission. Transfer is just when they go from one room to another room or they go from one unit to another unit. Um, the nursing assistant will help pack their stuff and sometimes the bed have to go with the resident, sometimes not. Um, why do they transfer? It could be that um, they're just not getting along on that, on that floor with their roommates and they want to, uh, one of them wants to be moved to another, another unit on another floor. So we transfer, like I said, um, the reason, the reason definitely had to be informed uh, in advance and they had to accept that they're going to move or they're going to be moved. So they already know, so they're going to get ready, and then you help them pack their things and go. This charge means that they're going home. They're leaving the facility completely. They're going home. So if you have already been planned, you know, weeks in advance that they're going to be going home, they said they have, there must be a doctor's order discharging them. Uh, maybe they just came for a short stay for rehab because uh, grandma um, fell and now um, grandma is feeling better and grandma can go home. The one thing to know about discharge, you know, you're going to help, as an assistant, you're going to help them pack their stuff, you're going to help them, um, you know, uh, move the stuff maybe in a, in a, in a cart or so and, and uh, take it downstairs to where the family packed the car. You're going to come back and put resident on the wheelchair and then, you know, with the family members, assist to push resident to, um, to the car. One thing that you should know about, let me see the picture is there, but well, let's go back a little bit. You should know about um, when you're putting resident in the car. When you um, transfer the resident from the wheelchair into the car, make sure that the seatbelt is on and the car is the car door is closed. If if you leave the resident just sitting um, in the chair in, in the in the uh, passenger seat in the car and the door is open, if they fall out of that car, it's still the responsibility of the CNA. So physical exam is when the charge nurse um, with the, with the assistant of the CNA, do a head-to-toe -to -toe assessment. When resident come in nearly, 
we don't know what they have. If they have wounds, they have bruises, they have, you know, any kind of skin issue that might be a problem later on and then the family will blame the facility for it. So we want to document the skin, um, anything that we see, uh, birth marks, surgical marks, we're going to indicate all that in the physical examination form. Well, what equipment do you need for physical examination? Sphygmomanometer, stethoscope, alcohol wipes, flashlight, thermometer, tongue depressor, um, eye chart, and turning fork. So you, the, the, the nurse, you know, will need a lot of stuff to use to do the um, physical exam on admission. Sometimes the resin might be placed in uh, dorsal recumbent, lithotomy position, or knee chest position. Let's look at the pictures. So this is dorsal recumbent, lithotomy, and knee chest position. So sometimes body positions are uncomfortable um, for the resident, but it's necessary for the charge nurse uh, to, um, you know, perform uh, head to toe assessment. Again, you know, wash your hands, and this is just how to go about it um, when you're providing, when you're doing physical exam. But mostly, it's going to be the charge nurse that does it, again, with the help of the uh, nursing assistant. That is the end of chapter 9, which is day 6B.